believe last time we might have left one of our collision points off in the wrong spot, which I think is this bottom left corner of our red brick. The x-coordinate should have actually been 1 instead of 0. Then we can head over to our event sheet. I want to add an event for a system start of layout. I'm going to put that at the top. And I wanted to delete all of my instances. We can't really remove this copy of the instance because we need one in the layout. But on start of layout, we can destroy the ones that exist so that they're not just floating off in space. But now that we don't have any blocks, we need to add a new group to create a new block. We'll add a sub event to our create new block. And that's going to be system. And we're going to want to compare two values. And we want to check our block.count. If that is equal to zero, so if there are exactly zero blocks on our screen, like right after we destroy the block we have, we're going to create a new block. So system, create an object. We want to create a block on our pieces layer. Start with the quotation mark, and you should get the drop down for the layers. Our x coordinate we want is going to be six times our block size, which will move us six blocks over, and zero for the y coordinate, so it starts at the top of the screen. And then temporarily, we're going to say our block should set our frame to random 0, 0,7. What that will do is it will randomly choose one of our frames from 0 to 6, because it does not include the last number. Now, after we've created it, so only if we've created it, so we'll make this a sub-event, so it only happens when we create. So if our blocks animation frame, so let's do animations compare frame. If that is less than or equal to five. So that would be all the ones from zero to five. Remember, these were the ones whose origin we put in the bottom second square. So all of these, what we want to do is we want to set their X and Y coordinates to half a block over. So block, set x to itself, that x, plus block size divided by 2. We'll do the same thing, except we want to do set y. And that will be self.y. Plus block size divided by 2. And then I'm going to add an else block, which should be all the other blocks, which is only the yellow one. Since this is only one block over, and these we have one and a half plus another half is two blocks over, we want them all to spawn in the same place. So I'm going to copy and paste just my exchange to self.x plus block size, not divided by two, so it moves over one entire block. And that should be all the code we need for creating a new block. So now let's add in some code so that our block does not fall through the board. Our block is can move is really only for when we're doing the controls, so when we press our keyboard buttons. So I'm going to remove that for now. And then I'm going to add a sub-event to my every fall delay seconds. And that is if my block is overlapping, add an offset. So we're going to check an offset before we move there. So for overlapping with the board at the offset, block size. So we're going to basically look one block ahead. If it's overlapping the board, then we're not going to allow it to move. So if that's the case, we're going to take our block and we're going to toggle our Boolean can move, which will make it false. And then we'll change our block into a new object here, which we will do in a minute. Then we're going to add an else here. 
So we're only going to move if we're not overlapping. Then I'm going to add an else to my every fall delay seconds. And I'm going to add another condition for system compare two values. And we're going to check our block count. So block.count. If that is greater than one. So if we somehow have more than one block on the screen, we're going to destroy our block because we do not want to have more than one spawn at a time. Hopefully that shouldn't happen, but this will cover any scenario where somehow two manage to spawn at the same time. So now I'm going to go back to layout one. I'm going to go to my block and I'm going to clone it. That's going to create something called block two. I'm going to take block two, move it onto the screen. I'll probably need to unlock my layer. Make sure I put that on the right layer, the pieces layer. Relock my background now that it's on the correct layer. I'm going to rename this to dead blocks. So this will be all of the blocks that have already landed and can no longer move. Now our dead blocks don't need a boolean for can move because they won't ever be able to move. So we'll just delete that. Head back to event sheet. We're also going to remove all of our dead blocks at the beginning, so destroy those. Then we're going to right click just to the left here in this little space, and we're going to make this block an or block, and we're going to add another condition. We want to see if our block is overlapping at offset the dead block. That way it will not also move down when it runs into a block that can't move. So it's going to be the same thing. Zero block size. So if directly under my block is either the board or a dead block, that's when I need my block to stop moving. So we toggled can move. We need our system to create a new object that is going to be a dead block. The layer shouldn't particularly matter. I'll go ahead and put those on the pieces layer. And those should be at the same location as the block. So block.x block.y. So we've created our dead block. We want our dead block to be the same color that we just had. So now that we have a dead block, we can use this action. We're going to set our animation frame to the blocks dot animation frame. So now they'll have the same color. And also because our pieces will be able to be rotated, we're going to take the dead block and we're going to set the angle to the blocks angle, so block dot angle. Now that we've gotten everything from our block copied over to our dead blocks that we need, we're going to take our block and get rid of it. And now that we have zero blocks on our screen, that should trigger another create block showing up. Okay, we'll see that it stopped where it's supposed to. I need to go back into block change the animation speed to zero so that it's not animated. Check dead blocks, make sure that that is also converted to zero since that's a copy of our block. Let's run that again. Looks like that's okay. The yellow one should also hit this block and stop right about here. Now these blocks are actually a different type of block than the block that's falling, but no one can see that because they use the same sprites.